There we go. And we have our first Bagon here. The first Bagon we will hatch of a good many, many Bagon. This episode is sponsored by my Patreon page. Hello there. If you enjoy my content, please take a moment to consider subscribing to my Patreon. Your generosity is very much appreciated and helps me to continue making content. As a way of saying thanks, Patreon subscribers get access to perks such as early access to episodes before they premiere on YouTube, exclusive content, the ability to vote and help decide on future content, access to my new Discord community, your name in the thank you section in every video, and more. Thanks again to everyone for your awesome support. Take care and enjoy the video. Ahoy there! And welcome back to Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we were raising up our horsey here so that it could learn Hydro Pump and Dragon Dance to pass those moves on to Bagon so that we can start the process of breeding a perfect Salamence. So, we're right on the cusp of level 50. We should be getting level 50 after this. We'll get to see Bagon, or excuse me, Horsey evolve into Seedra. After it learns Dragon Dance here. Nice. Get rid of Smoke Screen here. And finally, let it evolve. Seedra. I always thought that Seedra had a pretty cool design for a Generation 1 Water type Pokemon. Shame that the stats weren't so good. I think the Kingdra design is okay. But between the two, I probably like Seedra's design better. Seedra, the Dragon Pokemon. The poisonous barbs all over its body are highly valued as ingredients for making traditional herbal medicine. It shows no mercy to anything approaching its nest. Alright, we've got Seedra. And now we can start the breeding process in earnest. Going to fly to Marvel City, which will be our hub basically for efficient breeding. It's going to be quite a process. So we'll be spending a lot of time in and around Marvel City. Here on Route 117 is of course the daycare center. Now we can begin the process of breeding down the moves. Hydro Pump and Dragon Dance from Seedra onto a Bagon. Now, for competitive in the Battle Frontier, there are three varieties of Bagon that are strong and usable. There is a physical attacker, a special attacker, and a mixed attacker. Because dragon type itself is special in generation 3, that means that if you choose a physical attacker, big on stab will be kind of nerfed because all of his dragon type moves will be special attack. So I generally like using a mixed big on. And for mixed Bagon, you don't want a nature like Modest, because that will debuff its physical attack. 
I like naive nature because that boosted speed, which is almost a requirement for an attacker. And it debuffs special defense, which is a stat that Bagon doesn't, uh, Salamence doesn't really have to use that much. It's okay if special attack is debuffed, or special defense is debuffed. So that's going to be our target nature. Good thing we have a Bagon for the naive nature here. Now the rules for passing down egg moves are that the father has to know the egg moves to be passed down. So Cedra here, our male Pokemon, it knows the moves, and the mother is the species of the Pokemon that will hatch from the egg. So the baby will always be a Bagon because the mother is a Bagon. Now we'll need to empty our party to hold the eggs that spawn, and we will also need our friend Slugma here, because starting in Generation 3, the abilities Flame Body and Magma Armor have an overworld effect where they half the amount of steps it takes to hatch eggs. So, if we have an egg and magmar in our party, that egg will hatch 50% quicker. Now, to pass down the nature, the mother has to know the nature, the target nature, the nature we want, which is naive. And for the baby to inherit that nature, the mother must hold the Everstone item. So we give Everstone to Bagon here. And the baby will have a 50% chance of getting the Everstone, or getting the naive nature from the mother holding the Everstone. So, with our eggs, we'll have a 50% chance that we get a naive Bagon, and every Bagon that's hatched will be have the moves Dragon Dance, Hydro Pump, and Twister, because that's also an egg move, but we're not focused on Twister. So with everything set, we just hop on our bike and ride around. Here's the daycare man. He will give us the egg. You'll notice he's standing back here. When the egg spawns, he'll step forward, and that's how we'll know that the egg is ready to be picked up. And now we just ride. This is the longest uninterrupted route in the game, so... We can just go from left to right, all the way down. This is better with the mock bike because the mock bike is faster, so... We'll stop off at Rydell's here and swap out the bikes. This is why most players generally have the mock bike by default. Because it's faster and it's better for breeding. Now we just go up and down here. And the daycare man lets you know he'll give you three messages before the eggs spawn. The two don't seem to like each other much. This just means that it's going to be a little bit slower for them to spawn an egg. If he says the two Pokemon like each other very much, it means there's they'll spawn eggs very quickly. And if he says the two Pokemon prefer to play with other Pokemon, that means they will never spawn an egg. So now we just ride up and down the route. This is going to be our default, our basic view for 
a lot of the next few episodes as we're going through the breeding process. Just going up and down, keeping an eye on the Dare Care Man. Waiting for him to step forward because that means we'll get an egg. Except when the phone interrupts us like this. Mr. Daycare Man. So once we get our ideal bag on, then the next step will be the ditto phase where we start. Breeding with a ditto to pass down the ivies. Because since we're going for a mixed attacker, we're going to focus on three stats. We want a perfect attack stat, a perfect special attack stat, and a perfect speed stat. Yes, please. We've got our first stage. And it will keep spawning eggs as long as the two parents are in there. But do keep in mind that while the parents are in there, because we're taking all these steps, they will level up. And if, if they level up to a level where they would learn a new move, a new move will replace one of the moves the parent has. You don't get to decide, so it'll be completely random what move gets erased. So keep that in mind if you have a parent that you have if you have a parent in the daycare that has moves you want to keep, you have to be keep an eye out on their leveling. Because if it levels up and learns new moves, one will get erased at random. This doesn't matter so much for moves that you can relearn with the move relearner, but moves that are egg moves, once erased, they can't be relearned in this generation, so be careful with that. Now we're going for our goal ultimately will be three perfect IVs, and the other IVs can be pretty much random. As long as they're above like 25, that's going to be good for competitive usage. Okay, we've got a second egg, which is good because we're working with that 50% chance that the baby will have nature from its mother. The more eggs we have, the better. thing because in generation three breeding down IVs is a it's involved and complicated so generally three perfect IVs is what you can aim for with some level of reasonable reasonability in terms of time time investment once you get up to that four five six soon we're dealing in numbers that are impossible and a super time investment. Getting three perfect IVs is probably going to be quite an investment, but it's manageable. Especially for someone that's already familiar with the breeding process. So they know all the all the shortcuts to make it as efficient as possible. is where it's kind of passive. You just have to go left and right and keep an eye on the daycare man and wait for the eggs to hatch. Then 
things when we get to the ditto breeding part. We might go to the battle front here because we have to go to the ivy checker and the ivy checker is on the battle frontier island so we might have to go there once we start breeding for stats. I've got a bunch of ditto lined up. So I'll need to check their natures and their... I've already done some preliminary stat examinations on some of the ditto that I've captured, so... I'll be able to give a get a general idea of what dittos have great stats to pass down. And when you are breeding, the ditto takes the place of the mother. So the nature the ditto has will be the nature that's passed down with the Everstone. It has that 50% chance of being passed down with the Everstone. So our goal is to hopefully have a naive ditto with good stats. That would make things the easiest. Let's stop for a moment and check out pig number one. We'll hatch for this. It will take some time. So that's still pretty far away. There's two more message variations before the egg hatches at this state. Because this is a Bagon egg, for Salamence, the pseudo legendary, it has a very high egg step count, so it takes a while to hatch. More common and weaker Pokemon usually have low egg step counts, so they'll hatch very quickly. And then rarer, stronger Pokemon will have these high egg step counts. So for things like Salamence, Dragonite, Garchomp, Metagross, that's, they all have like, I think it's 10,000, over 10,000 steps for the egg to hatch. And when you use magma armor, it goes down to 5,000, which is still quite a bit. Now we just... I think we're... At a stage where it should be. Yep, it's making sounds. It's about to hatch. That means the egg is just about ready to hatch. Probably one or two more rotations and it will hatch. Let's see what we have. Okay, looks like it's... there we go. And we have our first Bagon here. The first Bagon we will hatch of a good many, many Bagon. It's a male. Lacks nature, so we didn't get naive. But it has passed down the moves. From Cedra, Dragon Dance, Twister, and Hydro Pump, so that's good. For right now, I'm going to hang on to these Bagon. 
even though they're not usable, on the off chance that they have perfect stats, if they randomly got perfect stats, so they might be usable in the future for breeding projects. But right now we are aiming for a naive nature. Why? Why would I have a naive nature on the on the uh, father, even though the father can't pass down the nature. That is actually a good question now that I'm thinking about it. Right now it's partially just to demonstrate how the Everstone works for passing down natures. It's also good to do this is a good practice just in case a female hatches. Because if a female hatches, it definitely can pass down that nature. And this is just sort of how you Keep things as efficient as possible, going for your target in all aspects. Trying to eliminate or mitigate the randomness as much as possible. So that the random elements are smallest at the things closest to your goal. And higher at things that don't matter as much. on number two. Let's see if we got lucky. Yep, an inherited naive nature. Okay, but looking at those stats, quick cursory look suggests that it has a low attack stat. Because I believe at level 5, uh, Bagon can have up to 14 attacks, so that 12 is looking really, really low. Good thing we have a couple more eggs. Or is it just one more egg? No, it's two. Okay. Since I'm close to the daycare, I'll take this time to move this bag on into the PC. I'll also hang on to this one because even though the attack stat is definitely low, it's possible that one of the other stats might be perfect and usable. This is the breeding process. You never let things go until you know for certain that their stats aren't usable. And we will hatch two more eggs here. I'm realizing now that I'm in this hatching process that we did get one egg from the story and I never hatched that egg, so I might throw that egg into the party at some point and hatch that during this whole breeding process. So you can finally see the egg we got from the hot springs in Lava Ridge Town. People that have already played through Emerald know what that egg is. What's in that egg?
Thankfully we got these four eggs relatively close together, so... They're hatching decently close to each other. That's no good. That lowers speed and raises special attack, so that's not gonna be useful because with debuff speed, a slow salamence is not gonna be as helpful. So we've been kind of unlucky on those 50-50 rolls so far. We've got two mismatches and one naive nature, so hopefully this last egg is naive nature and that'll put us at 50-50. But it could be either way because each individual egg is a 50-50 roll. Interesting that we haven't had any more eggs come out. I'm sure that Bagon's gained a couple of levels in the daycare. And Seedra might have gained one level, maybe? Probably not, because we're only racking up about, what, 30, maybe 30,000 steps so far? And I think Seedra's past that point since it's so high level at level 50. last age you couldn't hatch and we still want to fit any more spawn egg spawn from the daycare man okay it's just RNG because the RNG decides everything Since Bagon and Kingdra don't like each other very much, that just means we're getting the percentage of spawning egg is like 20% per roll. There we go. So that low 20% chance of them spawning an egg means it will miss more often than hit. So we have one more egg after this one hatches. I think that's gonna be good. I just want a Decent sample bag on to start with here. One that has possibly a good attack stat and and has naive nature and the egg moves. And the 
that can be the ditto, the first Bagon that we breed with the dittos. Start working towards that perfect. Hello. See if you are the one. Okay, this is female. It's got the naive nature. The tech stat is still low, but. I don't think I'm mistaken. I definitely feel like... as high as 14, at least so far. For a neutral nature on attack, physical attack. thousand step grind for this last day. So it's possible that another egg will spawn. I speak of the devil. Now this is probably going to get a little bit easier once we move on to the ditto stage because... Um, I think the compatibility is a little bit better between... Oh wow, that is very lucky. Looks like we'll have two eggs hatching very close to each other after this fifth one hatches. I was saying, I'm not entirely sure of the Pokemon uh, breeding compatibility. Wow, three? This is a quite the lucky streak right after our dry spell of eggs. As I was saying, I'm not entirely familiar with the breeding compatibility between the Pokemon because it doesn't matter that much, it's just a time thing, so it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But generally, I think Pokemon that are the same species same species have a little bit better compatibility than different species then same species but different trainer IDs have the highest compatibility so if I had a big on that I gained, gotten from a trade and was breeding that with one of my big on then the compatibility would be the highest and they'd spawn eggs super frequently But, as I said, that's just a small detail, it's just... 
It adds a little bit of time to the breeding process, but that time is negligible considering the overall time process for breeding perfect Pokemon. Oh, looks like we're going to end up with a full squad, a party full of eggs. And Slugma. It should be about to be big on us, that fifth big on hatches. Since we've reached this stage, I think we're probably good. I'm gonna say that with a party full of eggs, that we're probably good to move our original. I'm going to put two eggs in the PC so we have two slots. And big on is grown by four, siege is grown by two, okay. Thankfully I think Cedra Probably hasn't learned any new moves because it just learned to move at level 50. And it's like 5, 7, or 10 levels between moves, so. Oops, didn't want the Hall of Fame. Now that we have a squad full of eggs, I think it's safe to say we don't need you guys in the daycare anymore. It's very important to keep track of the Everstone critical in the breeding process. I'm sure that in one of the remaining five eggs we have here, likely to get a decent enough big on to move on to the next stage. The time sense says that big on number five should be close to hatching. Six and seven will follow, well, six, seven, and eight will follow pretty quickly in succession after that. Might as well check. Yeah, I'm thinking, what, five to ten more rotations here, and egg number five hatches. So I should start thinking about what to do what the steps in the process will be for the next episode. It's going to be checking out the Ditto, checking them for their natures and stats that they can pass on.
hopefully we'll have a perfect candidate among the ditto. And then we can hop right into starting the breeding process. Using the ditto. I think I should have enough money saved up. I won't go broke here in the breeding process because I need money to put Pokemon in and take them out of the daycare. So that's another factor that has to be monitored. Let's see, buddy. Naive, and that stats are looking pretty solid here. Okay. That's good. Kind of feel like I might want to try to hatch. Mm. Hatch everything in this episode and then move on to stage two. I think that's going to be the plan. Shouldn't take us too much longer. Maybe another five minutes or so. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. Once we've hatched everything, then in the next episode, we will start, go back to our PC, check out those ditto. And I guess I'll have decided if I'm going to head to the Battle Frontier now and start checking IVs, using the IV judge, or if I'm still going to hold off on that. I can't remember, but I think I originally said that I didn't want to set foot on the grounds of the Battle Frontier until I had one perfect IV Pokemon ready to go, but considering the IV Checker is on the Battle Frontier, I might have to go just to check the IVs. So I might do that in the next episode, or I might not. It all depends on how far we advance in this breeding process. Okay, let's see. Lax nature. We should have another egg hatching pretty quickly. Coming up. Another one quickly after that. And I think it was smart to pick big on. I think the process be simpler in one aspect and more complicated in other aspects if I started with something like Metagross. Naive. An attack stat as well. Ashful. 
then one egg left. So I think I'm going to move on to the next phase anyway. Mm. Yeah, I'll go to the next phase regardless. Because the real goal was to get a male big on that has the egg moves. I can pass them on using a ditto as a parent. Having good stats just makes it a little bit easier, but not required. Because the real weight will be carried by ditto. Okay, I think we're getting down to the wire here. This last egg should be just about ready to hatch. There it goes. Hello, Vagon. Will you be wet? Very naive, excuse me, yes. And the stat is okay-ish. Not so great, but passable. Maybe you'll be the one that I use. But that is going to do for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and comment and subscribe. I'm going to need comments to read as I'm going through this whole complicated breeding process. In the next episode, I guess we'll move on to the ditto stage, which is the stage we will spend the longest amount of time in because that's when we're actually hunting for the perfect IVs, which is going to be the longest and most involved part of the process. So I'm going to be happy to start that process in the next episode, and I will see you all then. Until then, take care.